So it might actually be happening. We may not have seen the end of Kerbal Space Program, or at the very least, our last Kerbal-inspired game. We recently learned that Rocketworks, the development studio behind games like Icarus and Stationeer, led by Dean Hall who created the DayZ mod, have decided to move forward with their spiritual successor to Kerbal Space Program, tentatively titled Kitten Space Agency. I say move forward because while Kerbal Space Program was in development, they were apparently debating how viable the project might be given the already well-established Kerbal fanbase and if competing directly with Kerbal Space Program 2 was something they really wanted to do. Long story short, after Kerbal Space Program 2 exploded on the launch pad, they have decided it's probably not such an insurmountable challenge, and are moving forward. This means that they have officially announced they are working on Kitten Space Agency and have opened up a Discord channel for people who want to follow along with the development of the game, as well as have some degree of input and communication with the development team. And this development team should have everyone excited. They have brought on some of the developers from Kerbal Space Program and Kerbal Space Program 2, including at least one who worked on both titles, as well as Blackrack, who was brought onto the Kerbal Space Program 2 team and is probably best known for his gorgeous work modding the original Kerbal Space Program. But one big surprise was that Harvester himself was on this list of developers. If you don't know who Harvester is, he is the lead developer of Kerbal Space Program 1 and is largely responsible for the game ever being made in the first place. And I don't mean that he pitched an idea to the game developer he worked for and it slowly got traction thanks to his persistence and talent. What I mean is he worked for a marketing firm. Squad, the developer of Kerbal Space Program, was not a game development studio and he was able through some mixture of passion and talent able to convince them to allow the development of Kerbal Space Program, which is one of my favorite games of all time. It's not completely clear what Harvester's role is here, but it appears that it is, at the very least, a consulting role. Something that the Kerbal Space Program 2 team was largely criticized for not doing. Apparently, the team over at Intercept Games, the studio that designed the disaster that is and was Kerbal Space Program 2, never once reached out to Harvester in any type of advisory way. Now, it is true that Kerbal Space Program and its DLC content was still being supported and even actively developed while Kerbal Space Program 2 was getting started, and that Intercept Games had created a sort of firewall between the two development teams, an already massive blunder. But Harvester was, at the time, no longer working at Kerbal Space Program, and would have been, at least I assume, able to have at the very least some type of informal or maybe even formal advisory meeting with the team planning to make the sequel. So, not to point fingers at anyone specifically, but obviously there was some poor choices being made right out of the gate. And the rest is, well, sadly, history. To catch you up to speed briefly, I have made several videos on the topic which I will link in the description below, but in the end, Take Two decided to scrap some of its smaller studios as a part of its 5% across the board reductions and one of those studios was Intercept Games. Intercept Games along with the intellectual property of Kerbal Space Program was part of a larger publishing company called Private Division. Private Division was a publishing company owned by Take Two that was home to Take Two's smaller, what they would consider indie projects. I say was because Private Division has since been sold in recent days to an undisclosed buyer, for an undisclosed amount of money, and it has been confirmed that this sale does include the IP of Kerbal Space Program 2. Sadly, it also confirmed, finally, after six long months of silence and denial, that Intercept Games has in fact closed. No comment was made about whether or not Kerbal Space Program 2 was the target IP of the acquisition, or if it was just part of what was bundled together and bought by some private equity firm to possibly be sold off in parts at a later date. And I am sadly inclined to believe the latter. Private equity acquisitions rarely lead to revitalization of anything other than shareholder account balances. In the end, we may learn that it wasn't private equity, but if it was a group planning to continue the development, we would probably know by now. This also brings up the question of why is this game still for sale on the Steam store? It should at the very least be marked down to a generous discount. So while I hope I'm wrong, my assumption is that we have very likely seen the end of Kerbal Space Program 2's development, and if we do see a continuation of the Kerbal universe, it won't be anytime soon. Again, I hope I'm wrong. But do not despair, because as I mentioned, there is hope, and it's called, for now, Kitten Space Agency. The current concept looks like this, but the developers have mentioned that this isn't finalized, and in the end it may not even be Kittens, although I kind of hope that it is. So what do we know about Kitten Space Agency? At its heart, KSA is a serious space exploration game with the charm and whimsy of kitten astronauts and scientists. The playful theme should add a unique personality to the game, blending cuteness with the complexities of space travel, much like KSP did. 
Like KSP, KSA focuses on realistic space physics, allowing players to build, launch, and manage their own spacecraft with physics-based challenges such as orbital mechanics, fuel management, and maybe even getting some of those kittens back home. Rocketworks is using an in-house framework called Brutal, which is similar in spirit to Microsoft's XNA framework, but designed to handle large-scale, high-performance simulations. The Brutal framework prioritizes control and scalability over convenience, allowing developers to work directly with low-level APIs like Vulkan. The Brutal framework enables high-performance direct GPU rendering and memory-efficient batch processing. So, unlike in KSP2, where the entire Kerbal was being rendered in full detail and scale even while it was not visible inside the ship, rendering in KSA is optimized using instanced meshes where similar parts are rendered as batches directly on the GPU, reducing CPU-GPU communication, boosting frame rates, and minimizing memory churn. If it sounds complicated, that's because it is, and it's designed to be that way so the developers are in full control. So already, we have been assured this will not be a repeat of the extremely low FPS debacle that Kerbal Space Program 2 was, and we should be experiencing a much smoother and more polished experience right out of the gate, because instead of focusing on the visuals first and the foundation second, the team at Rocketworks is building a solid platform from which they can construct a rocket and successfully launch their game. And to show this off, they have opened up a Discord that allows insights into the development and communication from the team something the KSP team really didn't do at all. There was a lot of secrecy surrounding KSP2, and really the only information we got for a long time were some interviews with some of the higher level development team, and a lot of what they said unfortunately turned out to not be entirely accurate. In addition, Rocketworks has also said that the game will be available for free, at least in some form during the early access period so that they can get feedback from the community during development. Ultimately though, the game will not be free, and they have not mentioned what the price will be. But the ability to try the game for free and actually having a development team that talks to us instead of ghosting their community and customers for 8 months at a time will be a very welcome change for me personally. So we have this visual test which is very early days and this is what the game will kind of look like for now. Which brings up the question, what do we know about the art style? Is it going to be similar to Kerbal Space Program, or will we be seeing something a little bit more realistic or more cartoony? Well, from what we know, the art style is described as a mix between KSP and KSP2 with a focus on consistency, performance, and modding ease. It appears that the focus is on a crisper graphic than in Kerbal Space Program 1, but not necessarily being the highest fidelity graphic available, which I think is a great mentality for this type of game. I personally would love to see some updated graphics in comparison to Kerbal Space Program 1, but Kerbal Space Program 2 spent a lot more time on making sure that the game was shiny enough and not enough time making sure it was actually playable. They clearly spent tons of time on the trailers and videos to make the game look like it would be fun, and honestly the trailers for KSP2 were great. It's too bad the game wasn't. In Kitten Space Agency, the style and theme will balance realism and whimsy to maintain both playfulness and immersion. And with people on board like Blackrack who brought us some of the best visual mods for KSP1, I have no doubt that we are in extremely capable hands. What's really interesting is that Rocketworks was actually one of the studios being considered to develop Kerbal Space Program 2 in the first place. So why didn't they get chosen for the sequel? Well, it kind of sounds like their bottom-up approach was the problem. Which is a shame because this bottom-up approach by Rocketworks is exactly what we needed from a sequel to Kerbal Space Program, which was notorious for its spaghetti of code to make the systems work within the limitations of its framework. And this is something that Rocketworks actually pitched to Private Division, and ended up being in the final three. During their pitch meeting, they apparently focused on how they would solve a lot of the internal technical issues that plagued Kerbal Space Program 1, and were planning to focus on the visuals once the foundation of the game was in place. But apparently, some of those working with Private Division mentioned that they were the only presentation in the top three that didn't include artwork for the game. They were obviously not chosen to be the developing studio, and we all see how focusing on the pretty pictures over the fundamentals of the game worked out for Private Division. And yeah, I'm still very salty about what happened. So is Kitten Space Agency going to have all of the features we expected to see in Kerbal Space Program 2? Mainly will it have multiplayer and interstellar travel? It looks like it will. 
There hasn't been a lot of details yet about what they plan to specifically include and if it will come out as part of the early access or maybe a bit later, but as far as I can tell, multiplayer is a planned feature. Although they haven't really made clear how the time warping will work, or if it will be regional or globally based warps in multiplayer sessions, or if we'll have to vote to confirm the warp speed like we'd have seen in some other titles. Either way, Kerbal was never really a multiplayer game in my mind, so if they said that they can't make it work, I won't be all that upset. Part of me would almost prefer that they scrapped plans for multiplayer, as it's always felt like a pipe dream for a Kerbal Space program, and something that makes the game just more complicated than it needs to be. To me, Kerbal Space Program has always been a solo experience, and I expect that I'll probably feel the same way about Kitten Space Agency. The feature I'm really interested in is interstellar travel, and the developers have said a few things about the scale of the solar system as well as interstellar travel and planets. Firstly, they have alluded to the fact that while the solar system will be very similar to our actual solar system, it will not be specifically based on our own planetary systems. So expect something a little bit more realistic than what we saw in Kerbal Space Program. And I'm personally glad for this. I'd like to see some fresh planets to explore while also keeping a familiar feel. They have also mentioned that the architecture is in place for expanding the size of the systems, whether in terms of adding additional planets or by making planets further apart, which is something that's going to be done by default, according to the developers. And while the focus of this game is planetary exploration, the game will be modular and scalable to allow for interstellar travel as well. So the development team will potentially be adding interstellar systems, but they will absolutely be available to modders. Opening up the game to the modding community seems to be a really big focus for the developers here. According to some rumors and some of what the developers have said, the game will apparently be as close to open source as they can make it without obviously giving away the source code. The developers seem to understand that the modding community is a big part of what made Kerbal Space Program so special and is planning on having more open communication and focus on providing the tools needed to create that new content. As I mentioned earlier, the early versions of the game will be free and open to modders for testing and feedback so that they can work with the community to create the game that we all want to play. And I am finally excited again. All of this is obviously subject to change, it's very early days, and given the limited information available, it's also possible that everything said in this video is not entirely accurate, so make sure you take everything with a grain of salt and try to verify the things you're most interested in. I did my best to verify what I could, but we will find out more in the coming months what's official and what was just a rumor. If you want to follow along with the development of this game, make sure to subscribe and I'll keep you updated as more information comes out. Or you can check out the Kitten Space Agency subreddit and join their Discord so that you can keep up to date on a daily basis and communicate with others in the community who are also excited about this game. Again, some of these names may have changed depending on when you're watching this video because even the name isn't finalized. It's that early. Tentatively, we may see an early free version available in 2025. We all waited almost a year to get our first major update from KSP2, so what's one more for a game that, as of right now, looks like it might end up being even better? Don't forget to hit that like button, it really helps my channel, and if you want to stay up to date on gaming news and developments, make sure you subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.